I'm the biggest fan they have, and I want to get up and close and personal with them. The Stan is the fan who loves too much. I should want to shake hands with Mr. Belvedere. I shouldn't want to grab a lock of his hair. If you are a Stan, the noun, or you Stan, the verb, you don't just love a particular show, song, or celebrity. That passion is part of your identity. 85% of Ryan's closet is Billie Eilish merch. She runs a fan account tracking Billie's every move. The term, a portmanteau of stalker plus fan, has been around since Eminem's 2000 song about the eponymous superfan who's destroyed by his obsession. Julie, yours, the biggest fan, this is Stan. Since then, it's evolved from a diss into a source of empowerment and community that many embrace. But predating the word, we can also find an array of on-screen representations who shed light on what it is to be an uber fan. Here is how you can spot a stan on screen. They worship a celebrity to an extent that this becomes their whole sense of self. Your password to your phone is my sister's birthday. It can be hard for any of us to remember that famous people are still people. And you must be Leslie No. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> You're... My, my, my name just came out of your mouth. But the stands turn their idol into a god and might be disappointed when that idol turns out to be a mere mortal or doesn't reciprocate and appreciate their love. An extreme stan might take their obsession too far into boundary-crossing behavior. Here's a picture of her medicine cabinet. This is a picture of her sleeping. There are a lot of those. Yet their complex motivations in psychology are rarely explored. Most on-screen stands are oversimplified, dismissed as a punchline. But if Beyonce simply answered one of my letters, I stopped trying to break into a house. Or a villain, representing the sin of fan entitlement. I'll take good care of you. I'm your number one fan. The more nuanced reality is that the stan reflects the lopsidedness of celebrity or influencer culture, which relies on fans to make entertainers wealthy, but doesn't necessarily care about those fans as people. Today, many of us speak of standing something or someone, while stan Twitter is home to powerful subcultures, even armies, that have mobilized as forces to be reckoned with. Here's our take on how the stan embodies the complexities of modern fanship, and why it's so tempting to escape into one-sided relationships instead of working through the challenges of reciprocity. I'm your biggest fan, Do not miss our new episode of The Takeaway on the Amazon Prime Video YouTube channel. So in this Takeaway episode, we're exploring a powerful and original film called The Map of Tiny Perfect Things. Are you experiencing any kind of temporal anomaly? It's going to leave you with some deep questions and a lot of interesting thought starters. So you're gonna need to watch our video. Click the link in our description below to check out The Takeaway on the Amazon Prime Video YouTube channel. Because when the movie ends, the conversation begins. The Stan term originates as a character. Stan is the obsessive fanboy in Eminem's 2000 hit song about the dangers of celebrity worship. I even got a tattoo with your name across the chest. Like any superfan, Stan wants to look like, connect to, and be with his idol. I'll be the biggest fan you'll ever lose. Sincerely yours, Stan. P.S. We should be together too. One of Eminem's initial lyrical inspirations, the phrase, your picture on my wall, from the Dido song he samples, Thank You. Evoked for him a common trope of crazed fans, the celebrity shrine. Hattie's president of the Prince Char fan club. But what makes Stan so fixated, in other words, what makes him truly a Stan, is the deep emotional attachment he develops, how much he relates to his favorite celebrity. See, I'm just like you in a way. I never knew my father neither. The moral of Eminem's tragic song is that Stan takes his idol's act too seriously and expects too much out of the artist-fan relationship. Dear mister, I'm too good to call and write my fans. One of the central points is that Stan is over-identifying with the artistic persona the rapper has created. As Eminem explains, it's a message to the fans to let them know that everything I say is not meant to be taken literally. After Eminem, it was Nas who turned the name Stan into a general diss in 2001's Ether. You a fan, a phony, a fake, a 
you stand. Yet, it wasn't until around 2008 that stan surfaced as a verb on Urban Dictionary and Twitter, I stan. As a verb, stan has shifted increasingly away from its originally pejorative connotations. To stan is an active choice you can wear like a badge of honor. I stan Ariana Grande because everything that you could possibly want in a pop star, that's what Ariana Grande is. You can also unstan if a problematic fave no longer represents your values. And it's no longer just I stan, but we stan. The beehive is what you call the stance. The people who are standing for Beyonce. Whereas Eminem's stan was undone by loneliness, stan culture now offers the benefits of community. The best part of being a fan of One Direction is the friends that you make through them because I feel that like I've made my best friends through going to see them. This isn't totally new. As The Guardian writes, for example, gay male culture has always coalesced around female pop stars like Judy Garland. But via social media, while interactions with the object of one's obsession are still rare, a stan can find an unprecedented level of connection with other like-minded stans. Today, we have stan armies collecting around a single figure or pop culture property, whether that's Aryanators, Swifties, Beliebers, The Beehive, J-Lovers, ARMY, Idiots, Fandroids, Potterheads, Dunderheads, Twihards, Nolanites, Shalomaniacs, Streepers, or the original Eminem fans, stans. Artists are truly only as good as their stans, who stream new releases to make sure they top the charts, defend their artists in the face of controversies or beefs, start stan wars with other fandoms, and create a shared language of memes, names, or hashtags around their artists. Which is really the ultimate compliment for a celebrity yes. when your fans organize and give <laughs> themselves a name. Arianators. A bit they of a mouthful. Of, they gave themselves that. At their worst, these fandoms can be intimidating or toxic, but they can also organize around charitable causes or political movements. K-pop stands in the U.S. flooded police surveillance apps and racist hashtags with videos of their favorite groups. At last, the stan is getting the attention he always craved. For better and worse, as a collective, stans today have true power to affect change and to get the world to take notice. What do we want? Free Britney! Beyond naming the trope, Eminem's stan established the Uber fan as an object of criticism. I'm glad I inspired you, but stan, why are you so mad? But he was far from the first to be harsh on this figure. Even the stan's tamer counterpart, fan, is actually short for fanatic, a word originally describing religious zealots who seem to go mad with their enthusiasm. I am a bit of a fanatic. While superfans of some form have been around forever, Stan culture has intensified as inventions like radio, TV, and the internet have made it easier for large groups to obsess over the same thing. In real life, fans are a totally normal and even valuable piece of the creative process, but on screen they get a pretty bad rap. You try to tie up every loose end, but you never can. The fans are always gonna bitch. They're a raging pain in the ass. Plenty of movies before Stan Twitter or Eminem's commentary deal with the character of the disturbing stalker fan. Not tonight. I gotta get to the station. No, you don't. Hey, you're talking to your number one fan. You don't work tonight. This entitled Stan feels that their emotional investment means they deserve control over their favorite creator or artwork. In the Stephen King adaptation Misery, Annie Wilkes is so sure she knows best for her most beloved character that she's willing to force the author to comply. Misery spirit is still alive. I don't want her spirit! I want her! And you murdered her! Annie and plenty of other Stan characters are villains because they refuse to be ignored. Instead of remaining in the shadows, gratefully consuming the content that creators bestow on them, these villainous fans claim the fictions they love as theirs. Unlike the vast majority of real fans, many of these on-screen fans are obviously dealing with mental health issues. TV and movies seem to love making fans look out of touch with reality. Yes, I'm a fan, but I really don't appreciate being mocked. I know the difference between fantasy and reality. Becky, it's all real. <sighs> I knew it! Or willing to become dangerous to get the attention they feel that they're owed. See? Now you respect me, because I'm a threat. That's the way it works. But if we look closer, we can see how, in reality, it can be a slippery slope from healthy appreciation into inappropriate obsession.
So what is it that makes some fans more invested than the rest? Ah, boomer so cute. Cute? He's the reason faces were invented, you idiot! At its core, the Stan celebrity relationship is a one-sided attachment. As TV Tropes terms it, loving a shadow can feel easier than a two-way relationship because it isn't complicated by two unique sets of needs and emotions. You always wanted to have a wife without the challenges of actually dealing with anything real. Sometimes it's simply that the idea of a person we nurture in our imaginations can be so appealing that it surpasses anything real life can offer. As The Great Gatsby describes Gatsby's image of his one who got away Daisy, it had gone beyond her, beyond everything. No amount of fire or freshness can challenge what a man will store up in his ghostly heart. He talked a lot about the past, as if he wanted to recover something. Some vision of himself that he had put into loving Daisy. But sometimes, for the Stan, a parasocial relationship is an outlet for love they don't feel they're able to obtain in their life. I did everything that I did to you because I wanted a friend. I needed one friend. The central fantasy of the Stan is that somehow the white-hot intensity and purity of their love will make the impossible possible and make a totally unattainable figure love them back. He resisted for a while and there was some legal boundaries, you know, keeping me from being near him. In the end, love overcame. But when that inevitably doesn't happen, the Stan's disillusionment can be intense. I hope you know I ripped all of your pictures off the wall. While sometimes the Stan is chasing a love interest they dream of being with, other times they're more interested in being like their hero. I know all your moves, your crime-fighting style, favorite catchphrases, everything! I'm your number one fan! Celebrities' lives look so much better than ours, with their power, style, and glamour. So the Stan emulates their idol in hopes that their life might get better too. I saw Katie Heron wearing army pants and flip-flops, so I bought army pants and flip-flops. In the case of The King of Comedy or its contemporary descendant, Joker, the Stan dreams of being famous himself and becomes unhinged after he realizes that playing by the supposed rules of the game won't get him anywhere. When I was a little boy and told people I was going to be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. Better to be king for a night than schmuck for a lifetime. <laughs> As much as The Stan professes to love their chosen celebrity, underneath this there can be an anger or resentment directed at their idol. I've watched you your entire career. Joy to the world. I'm and sorry, I'm late. You should only get cancer. I hope you get cancer. Stans feel they've been overlooked in their own lives while celebrities shined. You're a beautiful, brilliant, famous man of the world, and I'm not a movie star type. The Stan ends up exposing that underneath their obsession can be a deep insecurity, a feeling of being unwanted. You'll never know the fear of losing someone like you if you're someone like me. A moral of the Stan story is often that they're misguided to search for love through the artist-fan relationship or in the artificial world of fame and entertainment at all. 1950's All About Eve is the story of a Stan who actually manages the impossible and replaces her idol as Broadway's It Girl. Don't you know that part was written for Margot? It might have been 15 years ago, it's my part now. But her success is empty. More recently, 2017's Ingrid Goes West applies that same story to today's world of social media influencers. Obsessed with the allure of an insta-worthy life, Ingrid Thorburn stalks her favorite influencer, making it her mission to become the pseudo-celebrity's best friend. Look, I'm not a psychopath or anything. I just want to be her friend. After her plan unravels, with nothing left to lose, Ingrid shares her rock-bottom point on the internet. If you don't have anyone to share anything with, then what's the point of living? Which, ironically, finally makes her go viral. Apparently, you've got a lot of fans out there. Director Matt Spicer explained, though, that, quote, The fact that she gets what she wants is ultimately a hollow victory. It will never bring her the happiness that a real relationship will with someone who really sees her and cares about her. And maybe I'm just tired of trying to make people like me, and I'm tired of pretending like I'm someone I'm not, and I'm tired of being alone. Ingrid overlooks the most important lesson of her own story. 
The people we put on pedestals are just that, people. You're perfect. Yeah, perfectly. Stanning turns a mortal into a god. After all, the word idol alludes to biblical false idols. But while an omnipresent god is supposed to be able to love every one of his or her children, a celebrity definitely can't make time to pay attention to every one of their fans. The truth is, celebrities might not care as much as the fans want them to, even about their own creations. That show was just a paycheck to me, and nothing more. How could he say that? MacGyver is my world! And if you got to know your heroes in real life, you might not even like them as people. It's just too bad I'll never be able to discuss your poetry with you. Why? Because, Mr. Wolf, you're a drunk. The Stan character can push us to examine how we interact with celebrity culture ourselves. It highlights that giving endless energy to people we don't really know can end up hurting our real relationships. If I get married, he'll always be second to you. Extreme Stans do themselves a disservice they're giving out love where it's pretty unlikely to be returned. Sometimes I'll hear a joke that reminds me of you, and I'll feel sad because I have no way of telling you about it. Our negative view of stands comes in part because those who get the brunt of fan madness are the same people who portray or write them on screen. Stop emailing me. This is a restraining order. Stop sending me nude photos. Stop calling me. I don't know how you got my number. I don't know how you got my number again after I changed it. Fan stalking, hypercriticism, and general entitlement are aimed at creators, whose bad experiences might leave them with an unfavorable view of fans. Understandably, writers and actors focus on how standing affects them. That leaves less room for trope examples that empathize with fans, while some really strange situations get glossed over for a laugh. P.S. Enclosed, please find 14 of my eyelashes. <laughs> you know, in crazy world, that means you're married. Fans who don't have problems with boundaries get made fun of, too. Are you busy? And writing Star Trek fanfiction does not count. Ha ha ha. I we finished it last week. Fan boys are belittled, while fan girls are depicted as obsessed to the point of stupidity. Shows my char showers. <gasps> I bet he showers naked. <laughs> Their interests deem silly because young women care about them. It's striking that so many stories express a good deal of resentment and contempt from powerful creative people towards the fans who adore them and make them rich. People in positions of influence may feel shocked when confronted by a stan. Becky, why, why am I not wearing any pants? They're very constricting. Oh. Don't worry, I didn't do anything weird. But they also create the stan, perpetuating and profiting off of the stan's obsession. Celebrities and influencers might profess at every turn to love their fans and owe everything to their fans. Thank you to the fans. You guys make this worth it. Without really wanting to know those fans or offer them true respect. It's always nice to hear from the fans. But uh, for your own good, I strongly suggest you get a life. Often the celebrity is happy with the one-sided relationship as long as the stan doesn't get too close. Celebrities despise their fans. You get into entertainment to be removed from general society. Oh, okay. Without fans, stories and artists wouldn't have the support they need to keep going. And fan labor from the most dedicated stans keeps casual enjoyers engaged in the content. Dear fellow Monkophiles, as you can see, I have decided to redesign the homepage again. With their specific expertise and endless passion, no one truly knows a story or a song inside and out like the Stan. So in a way, it really does belong to them most of all. They don't even know what it is to be a fan. And I to truly love some silly little piece of music or some band so much that it hurts. In the end, we all have somebody we put on a pedestal to a degree that might make us lose our minds around them a little. Don't worry, not crazy, just a fan. <laughs> you are amazing. Inside every one of us is a Stan who just wants to connect. And if you ever get lonely, you just go to the record store and visit your friends. And now, get ready to watch the latest takeaway our brand new series on the Amazon Prime Video YouTube channel. Today's takeaway episode, 
is all about the map of tiny perfect things. Everybody else is stuck. We're free. It's a time loop movie like you've never seen before. Showing what it's like to experience a Groundhog Day-like phenomenon when you're young with your whole life still ahead of you. So watch our video to find out everything this film has to say about what time really is and what really matters in life. Click the link on the description below to check out the takeaway on the Amazon Prime Video YouTube channel. We are delving into the endings of your favorite Amazon Prime originals, answering your big questions, searching for the symbols you might have missed, and uncovering the bigger messages you can take away with you. You're really supporting us by liking, commenting, and subscribing, and telling us which Amazon Prime Video shows you want the takeaway on next. The takeaway. Because when the movie ends, the conversation begins.